The speed of your home wireless network is no longer just a luxury, but is becoming an essential part of the infrastructure as technology takes over the home. How to AV system expert Andy Short joins us to ensure that you're getting the most from your Wi-Fi network. Not too many years ago, the four main utility services we consider for the home were electricity, gas, water and the good old landline telephone. But now of course broadband has replaced the landline telephone as the priority communication system. The speed and reliability of your internet connection has now become so important that it can often have a significant effect on property prices in the housing market. And as the internet of everything continues to fill our homes with internet connected devices, it's no longer just the speed of the web pages that rely on great broadband, but also video and music streaming, smart home control, home security, and much more. Today, we're joined by how-to system expert, Andy Short, for some great tips and tricks to get the very best out of your home broadband and Wi-Fi network. Andy, many thanks for joining us. Perhaps we should start off by understanding just how important the speed and reliability of our broadband service has become. It certainly has, Chris. So many devices are now linked and reliant on internet access. Computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones, smart TVs, and games consoles such as Xbox One and PlayStation 4. With a small family of four, it wouldn't be unreasonable to easily expect 12 or more personal devices to be connected to the home network, many of which will be wireless. And now, not only are we connecting more and more devices, but the media we're consuming online, such as the live streaming of movies and TV programs, often in HD, are so much more data hungry. In addition, we're also starting to connect non-media devices and systems to our internet connection, as smart home technologies, such as heating and lighting control, and home security become increasingly popular. The number and diversity of IP connected devices will only increase in the future, as remotely controlled home appliances, such as kettles and fridges, which can automatically order our groceries online, are either already on the market or are just around the corner. So I guess we'd better make absolutely sure we're getting the very best from our home broadband network then, Andy. Where should we start? We should start with the wireless router. In most homes, you're going through the front door and the BT master socket, telephone socket, is next to the front door and the broadband router is plugged into it. Now that antenna, the aerial within the router, is broadcasting omnidirectionally, so it's sending the signal out equally in all directions. So not only are you covering your home, you're probably also covering next door neighbour's home and the street as well. Ideally, the broadband router should be located in the centre of the house, the higher the better. And what about the quality of the Wi-Fi router and the network cabling in our home? How is that going to affect things? Well, the quality of the equipment is very important, along with the amount of uh, devices which are actually connected to the network. But not only that, distance is the major problem. Mm. The further you go away from the router, the weaker the signal becomes. So if you're watching video streaming services like Netflix and YouTube, you might find that the picture goes fuzzy for a few seconds, or you get buffering of the video. This is when the server is, in effect, uh, compensating for that slow speed. It's compressing the data to try to give you a picture. So you probably see uh, an, an issue in uh, performance of the picture. And providers are now giving us 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connectivity as well as the 2.4 gigahertz. So what's the difference and should we assume that 5 gig is always best? Well 2.4 gigahertz uh, routers have been around for a long while. A lot of devices out on the market use 2.4 gigahertz, not only wireless routers but other things like video senders. There's not a lot of channels you can use, so the actual uh, frequency, the bandwidth, what it's using is actually quite congested and of course that can affect speed and uh, quality. When 5 gigahertz came along, everybody thought, oh, wonderful, you know, we've got more channels, we can actually get a higher speed. The only downside with 5 gig is with it being a high frequency, you don't actually get the same coverage. So the distance actual effect can actually be more pronounced. You know, sometimes a long distance cable will probably seem better uh, than a long distance Wi-Fi connection. Any more little tips that you can throw at us, Andy, is really going to help to improve our Wi-Fi network? Yeah. yeah, well, if you have got actually got a slow broadband connection, or you have got a, a dodgy wireless connection, rather than streaming the data, you'd probably be better off actually downloading the media you want to view uh, and then playing it back from your device as opposed to streaming. And the only other tip from me would be that if you find the Wi-Fi is unusually slow one night, 
confiscate all the kids' phones and the laptops and every other device for the night and keep all that bandwidth for yourself. Andy, thanks for joining us and thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon here at howtoav.tv. Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, click on the channel subscribe for even more AV knowledge as it goes live. And we'd love to see even more questions for the team in the comments section below. Perhaps your question will be the next subject on howtoav.tv.